it's a very fascinating journey which I found myself on. I didn't purposely go there. It was just that through things happening in my life, it sort of put me in this direction. Many of us have dreamt of a sea change, a tree change, even a spiritual change. But have you ever thought you could pack up your life, your career, leave it all behind and make a zoo change? Well, that's essentially what Simon Stretton did. They call me the Dingo Man. Some people call me Dingo Simon. I live out here on a property called Jurong Dingo Sanctuary on 50 acres in the middle of a forest. And I live here with 18 dingoes. But he'll, he'll scare himself when you I decided to retire, for sold my house, came up here, lived in a little cabin. And it was just after I'd finished the house that someone contacted me about some dingoes, could I rescue some dingoes? Because they knew I'd been involved with dingoes in Victoria. So that sort of gave me a second chance again to start uh, working with dingoes. So I started off with four or five. The classification they gave me was a, a zoo. Most of them are wild or wild-born dingoes. It's become my lifelong mission now to try and save dingoes. And so why are the dingoes so important to you though? Well, I guess because they've become my life. It's sort of something I didn't choose to do. It's just something that I've evolved in because someone asked me to save their dingoes and I did. And then next thing out, uh, I'm surrounded by dingoes. I'm doing the best I can to give them the best environment. Now with dingoes, the other thing they do when they greet each other, always lick each other's mouths. Yeah. So this is him greeting me. And sometimes he'll knock my head off and he'll just keep licking my head and just keep licking and licking. If I come in and I'm bleeding, he'll keep licking my blood and try and stop the blood flow. So I know, I've just proved to myself that, you know, the smell of human blood is not going to excite them and turn them into killers. It's just like, oh, you're bleeding. Oh, you, oh, you poor thing, I'll try and stop it from bleeding. But they're not, but you're also saying they're not, they're not like pets. They've got their own agenda. And they're not seeking human approval. They are just totally independent. They do their own thing because they're a wild animal. But things haven't quite gone to plan, and Simon is now dealing with the unintended consequences of his good intentions. The irony of all of this is that I've spent all this time building up the sanctuary and trying to save these dingoes. But at the end of the day, I'm going to have to be the one to pull the trigger and kill them all. Simon received an $18,000 debt notice from the bank in September last year, threatening eviction if he fails to pay. Bad news for Simon, and potentially fatal news for the dingoes. Sanctuaries are a problem. Mark Townen is the CEO of the RSPCA in Queensland, and says these sorts of stories are not uncommon. It's often a sad ending, because people put a lot of effort in, people are very well-meaning, good intentions, and that's their life. But if they can't get those animals out alive, everyone's failed. As you can see in the long term, it's not the result any of us want. We have to make sure those animals don't go into those sanctuaries in the first place because they're not sustainable and those animals will be euthanized. So when do you find out, Simon, if, uh, if you've got the place or not? What, what's the deadline on this? Um, my solicitor wrote a letter to them. They've, they stopped repayments for 12 months. I'm trying to drag money out of my pension and put it into another bank, so at least I might have a few thousand dollars come um, uh, October. Financial pressures aren't the only obstacles in Simon's way. Deteriorating health means he's unable to work and currently shares his disability pension with the dingoes. I've got a catheter in here, I've got an operation soon to get this catheter out, they're yeah. going to drill through my prostate. And so it's a we I know. I just went to the, to the hospital last oh, week to discuss prostate. about it. I said, how, how are you going to do this? So they shove a camera up through your... Simon acknowledges that the future of the sanctuary staying open is extremely dim. A debt of $180,000 doesn't make for an attractive business investment, which means the likelihood he'll have to pull the trigger is fast becoming a real one. So do you think the dingoes like you? Me? Mm. Oh, they love me, yeah. There, there's something going between dingo to dingo. And... Um, and they're probably talking to me all the time, and they're probably frustrated that I don't understand them. So I'm trying to understand them, and I'd love to get inside their head. And Simon's advice for those looking to follow a similar path, put simply, is don't do it. But despite Simon's battles, he has no regrets. And when we asked him if he would have done anything differently, his answer is a no. 
you know, we all want to feel we've been put on this earth to do something good with our lives. But I fell into this. I think it's a shared responsibility. It's a shared from the legislators and regulators to allow that to actually happen without actually looking at the long-term options for those sanctuaries. It's also a community problem. All of us are, are at fault because we've allowed that habitat to disappear and need, the need for these animals to be moved into some other situation. I, I know it's the right cause. It's my calling and, uh, you know, my battles are bigger.